Did you know there's a government program meant to make you fall in love with Thai food? Or that a forgotten American chain from the 1940s is still popular here? Those are just two of the crazy things we've learned since moving to Bangkok a little bit more than a year ago. So as we close out this year, we figured we'd do something fun and give you our top 10 surprising facts about Thai culinary culture that we've learned since moving to the country. Number 10. The most popular curry tastes nothing like what I expected. You know Thai curries. They're rich and creamy and nothing like this. This is green curry, and it's the most popular curry found locally here in Bangkok. It's thin, almost like a soup, and it's not sweet at all. It can be outrageously spicy, with the green color coming from fresh Thai chili peppers. And here it's served usually with chicken on the bone, sometimes with organ meat or congealed blood, or homemade fish balls, with extra flavor and texture from daikon and Thai eggplant. It's the heart of Thailand's street food scene, and it's allegedly the single most common meal eaten in the Thai capital. Just don't expect it to taste anything like what you might expect the first time you try it. Number nine. There's no such thing as a Thai restaurant, except for the ones meant for foreigners. Thai food outside Thailand means all the classics, samtam, tom yam soup, red curry, spring rolls. In practice here, that's not something that exists. See, Thailand's a big country and the cuisine is totally different from region to region. To put it simply, there are five unique areas within Thailand with totally different foods. If you want som tam, you find an Isan restaurant where it's served with grilled meat and sticky rice. For masaman curry, you need to look for Southern Thai with its Indian and Muslim influences. Bangkok is heavily influenced by the Chinese, so that's where you'll find stir fries like Pad Kapow and Pad Thai. So here, if you want to try these dishes, you'll need to go restaurant hopping, or at least understand that if you see all of them together on one menu, it's probably somewhere locals would never go. Number 8. The most popular dessert chain is something you probably forgot existed. Raise your hand if you're old enough to remember Swenson's. This ice cream parlor chain from San Francisco once had about 400 locations in the United States, but by the end of the 1990s was pretty much extinct. That is, until it found a new audience in Thailand. Today, there are only three Swenson's left in the U.S., but almost 300 over here. In fact, more than 85% of all the Swenson's outlets on Earth are in Thailand, although the success has led to a rebirth of the brand with development growing throughout Southeast Asia. There are other surprising chains that are popular here, like IHOP and Benihana. There's even a few blockbuster stores still going over here. No, that, that's a joke. There's none of those. Number 7. Young Thai people are obsessed with Mukata. Now, Thai customers might like Swenson's, but for the younger generation, they love Mukata. It's the trendiest thing in Thailand, and it's basically a fusion of Korean barbecue and Chinese hot pot. You grill your meat on the pan on top and use the broth to cook the vegetables. A lot of these places are fixed price. Pay a set fee, then eat whatever you want in the allotted time. So along with being interactive and fun, it's also affordable, which is one of the biggest reasons why you never see a Mukata place without big groups of Thai teenagers and young professionals, and why this segment of the market is exploding in recent years. Number 6. A lot of Thai food is actually from Lao. It took me a long time when I arrived in Thailand to understand why I couldn't find a single Laotian restaurant in Bangkok. It is, after all, a close neighbor with a long land border. The truth is, though, there is Lao food everywhere. In Thailand, it's just called Isan. So basically, the short version is the amazing culinary region of Isan in Thailand's northeast, the home of larb and spicy salads and some of the world's best grilled meats, is mostly ethnically Lao, and for much of history has been a part of both Thai and Lao kingdoms. So the next time you're at a Thai restaurant enjoying a plate of som tam, know that the dish is a Thai staple, but it's originally from Laos. 
Number five, the impact of the Portuguese. Speaking of surprising influences, would you have guessed that the countries with the biggest impact on what we call Thai food would include China, Laos, Myanmar, India, and Portugal? The truth is there has been a Portuguese presence in the Kingdom of Siam since the 16th century and many modern Thai foods, particularly snacks and desserts, were actually brought to Thailand by the Portuguese. Maybe the most surprising part of that story is that the original Portuguese settlement in Bangkok is still intact today, and you can actually find ancient European dishes brought over hundreds of years ago still served in the narrow alleys of one amazing neighborhood. Number four, the national dish was created because of World War II. Pad Thai doesn't look like a lot of other Thai dishes. It's stir-fried flat noodles in a cuisine based around rice. But there's a reason this dish exists and became so wildly popular. The short version is that in the 1940s, Thailand was an independent country surrounded by territories colonized by European powers. So the prime minister introduced reforms meant to strengthen national identity. And that meant creating a unifying national dish. And it just happened that there was a rice shortage due to the war so instead, he borrowed and adapted a noodle stir-fry from the Chinese. And that's how we ended up with Pad Thai. Number three, nobody cooks at home. Okay, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but man, the first thing I do anywhere is check out the local wet market to see the local produce and ingredients. And it was quite a surprise to find that in Bangkok, those are almost non-existent. What you do find are tons and tons of markets selling prepared foods, dishes ready-made to take home for a few pennies. And the wet markets that do exist sell to restaurant cooks and street cart owners as much as to the everyday local family. In all the world, Bangkok is almost unique in how common it is to eat out or at least take away. And why wouldn't you buy your food instead of cooking it? When the price is so low and the quality is so high, compared to taking the time and effort to do it yourself. Number two, there's a national chain of vegan restaurants owned by a notorious 1970s cult. The group is called Santi Asok and it has more than 10,000 members on communes throughout Thailand. In the 1980s, the organization was seen as highly controversial and its television star founder was arrested and charged with a series of religious and political crimes. In the end, he was acquitted though, and to salvage the group's reputation and reach out to new prospective members, Santi Asok began to set up vegan cafeterias, first in Bangkok and then all across the country. These restaurants are considered some of the best places for vegan or vegetarian food in Thailand and use ingredients from their gardens and farms. In Bangkok, the flagship restaurant is right next to the famous Chatu Chak Market, and it's possible that if you've been to the city, you might have eaten here without having any idea of the backstory. For the number one item on the list, stick around just a second, but first, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just click the button below and turn on notifications to follow all of our food and history content here on OTR. Number one there's an overseas Thai food academy. It turns out there's a good reason why so many overseas Thai restaurants serve a very similar menu of Pan Thai classics. Starting in 2002, the Thai government began funding a culinary diplomacy program with the idea of increasing the presence of Thai food around the world. They actually offer prefabricated restaurant concepts in multiple styles, complete with menus, recipes, and design. And for any Thai citizens who want to follow this path, they offer loans to make the process easier. When the Global Thai Program launched, there were more than 5,500 Thai restaurants outside the country. 20 years later, that number has more than tripled. And while this has enhanced Thailand's cultural reputation and been an unequivocal success, it's also bred a lot of uniformity. To qualify for government funding, overseas Thai restaurants must use the program's approved recipes for certain important dishes and also fit one of a few approved themes. 
So that's our list of the top 10 surprising facts about Thai food that we learned after moving to Bangkok. Anything else we should know? Leave us a message and don't forget to check out our Patreon, website, and Instagram linked below.